Hi everybody, it's September 17, 2019. Oh, our world. Oh, our world has gone completely bonkers. Ah, Brazil experiment may have accidentally created genetically modified super mosquitoes. Yeah, coming out of a Yale research study. Super mosquitoes. Remember how many of us were posting on OxyTech, releasing those genetically modified mosquitoes in Brazil? Oh, and Florida and other places around the world. Yeah, they thought that the offspring would die. Oh, well, oops, sorry. That's not what happened. The mosquitoes adapted. Some of the mosquitoes likely have hybrid vigor, resulting in a more robust population than the pre-release population. And yeah, more resistant to insecticides. So they have produced a super mosquito that they don't know what the consequences are and they're more resistant to insecticide. So, what you gonna do? Uh, the failure of OxyTech's experiment has raised alarm among scientists and environmentalists. Biologists critical of genetic engineering go one step further with their criticism. Among them, the Brazilian biologist, Jose Maria Guzman Ferraz. The release of the mosquitoes was carried out hastily without any points having been clarified. A Munich-based research laboratory, Test Biotech, which is also critical of genetic engineering, accuses OxyTech of having started the field trial without sufficient studies. OxyTech's trials have led to a largely uncontrollable situation. This incident must have consequences for the further employment of genetic engineering, don't you think? Wouldn't that be, ah, uh, well, uh, if, if it would have consequences for uh, future genetic engineering, that would mean that we have wise scientists and wise people in the world, but unfortunately we don't. We don't. In fact, we have, well, uh, people who have gone bonkers and they need support groups. They need support groups. Climate anxiety groups are the new self-care. In 2012, I was rather surprised that a new 12-step program started. I can't remember what it was called. It came out of Woodstock, New York. Some guy started this 12-step program. Yeah, addicted to plastics, addicted to cars and not walking, addicted to SUVs and, well, you should get a hybrid and, or better yet, bicycle your way through life. Yeah, it was a 12-step program. Um, okay, well, now anxiety groups, support groups are growing around the country as activists seek to stay engaged while grappling with feelings of frustration and hopelessness. Within 24 hours of a climate anxiety session being announced, all the seats were reserved Amid laughter and ambient festival noise, 30 people gathered in a hot tent, sat on rugs, lawn chairs, to talk about their feelings of despair, depression, anxiety. This apparently was, uh, let's see, there were dance parties, DJ sets, drum classes, tutu making, workshops. Uh, despite the buoyant, buoyant mood, it wasn't just another festival tailor-made for glossy Instagram photos. Instead, catharsis on the mall 
which was inspired by Burning Man and took place on the National Mall in May, well, they had a different aim, healing. Healing. Okay. Oh, uh, there is not really a space, I don't think, for people to talk about these feelings. Chang, Debbie Chang, a volunteer with the D.C. chapter of Citizens Climate Lobby. Uh, yeah. They don't have a place to talk about these feelings. Why not? Why not? Um, you hear anxiety and depression and despair and hysteria almost every single day coming out of mainstream media. Don't you identify? People don't want to dwell on negative emotions. That's right. Oh, you gotta be positive. You have to be positive. Smile. Be grateful. Be grateful. And smile and be positive as you're getting destroyed. Well, people want to be heard and validated. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you identify with that? I certainly do. Uh, attendees were asked to jot down emotions they felt when thinking about climate change and elaborate within small groups. After exploring the emotions, Chang led a discussion about coping mechanisms, including breathing exercises, yoga, meditation, and stretching. Oh, well, let's just hope that those exercises actually lead them into truth. How about that? As part of staying grounded in the work, the group also discusses what aspects of the movement made them hopeful. In naming those hopes, they were tasked with envisioning an ideal future and to imagine the first baby step they could take towards actualizing it. Hmm, wow. There's a lot of doom and gloom and it's important to remember what it is you're working for you're working for. Yay! Let's get rid of our cars and only walk and use a bicycle. Yay! Let's have every aspect of our life controlled. Yay! Let's live in a smart city and die from all of the electromagnetic frequencies that we will be really saturated in, in a very dense, dense environment. Yay! What are we working for? We are working to get taxed up the wazoo, live in stacking packs, and, and have most of our fellow Americans destroyed and dead. Get them out of their areas. Oh, I'm, I'm going to be heading towards what's happening in Texas and... Um, posting another video on a whole lot of flooding that is taking place that I don't think a lot of people know. Oh, wow. What are we working for? The destruction. The complete destruction of our own freedom. Destruction of individual rights. Destruction of property rights. Yay! I feel better already. Don't you? Oh my God. I think there's a lot of research to support that visualizing. That first step means people will more likely take it. I'm getting rid of my car. <laughs> Growing movement of support spaces that have sprung up around the country. Oh my God, guys, we're in trouble. There's a feeling that your anxiety or your feelings are going nowhere. We're locked in the warming. Greenhouse gas will have effects for decades. Wait a second. The world's coming to an end in 12 years, according to AOC. So what do you mean decades? One decade plus two years. That's all you got, not decades. Uh, ready for this? A resident physician, Alex Trope. A resident physician at the University of California in San Francisco within the Department of Psychiatry. Ah, it's the 11th hour. People are going to feel that now. Trope, 
is also a member of Climate Psychiatry Alliance, a group comprised of psychiatrists who believe that mental health is significantly impacted by the changing climate and requires more clinicians to be well versed in the concerns of the activist community. In addition to ideas on how to take tangible and meaningful action, the Alliance is working to build a list of client-aware therapists. Yes, professional intervention for climate anxiety might be necessary for those with deep dysfunction. It's important to find someone who can hold it with you, not crack jokes or not recognize the crisis. Holy shit, guys. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, things are about to explode. You know, batshit crazy is about to explode when psychiatry gets involved. Okay, New York City says 1.1 million students can skip school for the climate strike protest. Oh my God, we're in such deep, deep trouble. Friday on the 20th, students will need parental consent to skip school. You don't need parental consent, well, to have an abortion and to uh, begin uh, the transgender transition. Oh, you don't need parental consent to get vaccinated. But you need parental consent to skip a day of school to be a climate change activist. People are out of their friggin' minds. They are so lost. We are so lost in this country, it's pathetic. Organizers expect millions of people to leave work and home and school to take part in massive climate strike protests around the world. Well, they got it going. Now, it's funny. There are times, there have been times when I thought, oh, okay, the truth, man, we're gaining steam. I lost it this year. 2019 has been one hell of a year of uh, the use of weather as weapons, and so many people have been destroyed, and uh, they really ramped up the climate change propaganda. AOC, people listening to AOC. People are listening to the most, well, I don't know what to say, I'm sorry. Batshit crazy people. And nobody cares. You know, it, it's like, we used to value critical thinking. We used to value, you know, intelligence. We used to value, um, you know, looking into things, but uh, now uh, you get you get trash, denigrated, if you use your brain, if you still critically think, if if you know you want to bring somebody some research, evidence, facts, you you get attacked. We're living a time where you know it. it we need a support group. We all need a support group. We need a, hmm, let's see, a support group for our frustration and our hopelessness against those batshit crazy people. And they look like this. All right, so I want you to listen to this just for a few minutes. Friends and family from around the world, this is Mike with Morning Dew. Daily events worldwide. We are on September 11th, 2019. Another video from me, because something's not right here. Looking at the total precipitable water from around the world right now, and there is mass amounts of moisture accumulating and falling across the world.
next and um, post tropical low once we get to Wednesday. So it won't be around all that. Well, your 11 Alive storm trackers are tracking our newest tropical storm named this afternoon, Tropical Storm Imelda, which is just off the Texas coastline, not too far from Galveston, Texas. Uh, the winds at 40, gusts to 45, moving to the north at seven miles per hour. So since it just formed, of course, it's not expected to strengthen as it just formed along the coast. It's not expected to strengthen as it moves over land, but it has the potential to bring in some real flooding problems for them. Some uh, very heavy rain as we head into the next two days or so. So you can see it is. All right, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I have this new mic and yeah, I can pause the, uh, the microphone now, but I never remember to unpause it. So I just spoke to you and you didn't hear. Precipitable waters. What I was saying is man can create, you know, all of this precipitable water in, in the pink. And that's what's happening in Texas. And I will show you that. But uh, this is what you just saw. NBC. It's an NBC affiliated vir uh, virtual news. Um, is this a real person? Is this a real person? I don't know. But what's all of that shakiness about? We are 11 Alive Storm Trackers are tracking our newest tropical storm named this afternoon, Tropical Storm Imelda, which is- All right, I, I okay. Um, don't quite understand, but this is, this is literally a news. Pro, uh, a news program. Is this, is this is what we're going to be living in that virtual reality? You know, I do wonder about some of these young reporters, if they're actually human. All right, let's just listen to a few minutes of, uh, this is, I'm afraid, going to be a really bad flooding event in Texas and it's manufactured once again um, it became a tropical storm right smack on the coast of Texas Meanwhile, back here closer to home, live look from Galveston. On the island, the rain from Tropical Storm Imelda is going to be very heavy there. It doesn't look too bad at the moment, David Paul. Where is it falling right now? Some of the like Galveston County, up and down the Gulf Freeway, they've got a flood advisory there for street flooding and the on ramps and exit ramps. And that's what we're going to see a lot of. As far as a wind threat, no, not really, unless we get an isolated tornado, which is possible, we'll watch for that. But this is a significant flood threat. These weak tropical systems, they don't bring much wind with them, but they do bring a whole lot of rain. How much? Widespread three to five, which we can handle. We're dry. Bodies are all down, rivers are down, we're good. It's the isolated 15 to 25 that's possible that we're concerned about and what we'll be watching for very carefully. Winds threaten out through Friday morning. It doesn't end until Thursday night, Friday morning. Galveston. I mean, it's, it's interesting. interesting. Here, tropical storm, storm conditions, conditions, although we're not seeing many, many gusts to 40 miles an hour. Most of the winds down here are 25 to 35 miles an hour. But you're in a tropical storm warning Galveston and across the upper Texas coast. Obviously dangerous swimming and boating. Don't go in there. Significant flash flood threat on the coast. That may be where the heaviest rain falls. And just to give you a, a, a look at the difference between a Cat 2 hurricane, that's Umberto moving out to open sea. But you can see a little bit of a counterclock rotation with our very weak tropical storm Imelda, who became a tropical storm right around lunchtime, and then by the middle of the afternoon, the center had moved inland, and now it's already weakening. So again, not a wind threat, as it's now inland. It won't strengthen the winds, uh, but the rain will be run out over the next couple of days, and these tropical systems are notorious for dumping flooding rains. Uh, flooding rains. Okay. Okay, here, um, the mainstream media is talking that tropical storm Imelda, and every time I say Imelda or think that name, I think of shoes. Remember Imelda Marcos, who had an awful lot of shoes? Okay, drop six to 12 inches of rain. 
and could bring life-threatening flooding. How often do we hear this now? Ah, sandbagging. How often do we see communities with their loading up the sandbags, doing everything that they can to protect their property? Okay, heavy rain was already falling in parts of Houston on Tuesday evening. Up to 18 inches of rain could fall in some pockets, flooding in urban, low-lying, and poor drainage areas is anticipated. Poor drainage. Yeah. Well, that infrastructure, I guess, your money didn't go to update any of your infrastructure. You paid the taxes, you got no services. The area is still recovering from the devastation of Hurricane Harvey, which lingered over the city as a tropical storm in August 2017. Lingered for four days. This one, it's supposed to linger over Houston. Well, I'm not sure if it was this article or another article. Linger for three days. Huh. Okay. Heavy rain, high winds, tornadoes leveled entire neighborhoods. Uh, for those who ask why are they doing this, you have to look into Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and smart cities. Put it all together. They are destroying areas. And, oh boy, they get a lot of donations from people that don't go to the people who actually need them. It goes to create the smart cities. We have the United States being transformed into mega regions. I've posted a lot of videos on this, uh, but the mega regions uh, will be where uh, all of these people can visualize visualize their ideal future. Visualize those mega regions. Visualize 5G as a prison grid. You're not allowed out of your mega region. Uh, you got that social credit score just like China. Uh, you won't be driving cars. Uh, you will be biking or walking, living in very tight quarters, and uh, you will enjoy it. You will enjoy it. My God. I also really identify with all of you who write, I'm glad I'm old. <laughs> uh, I feel kind of you know guilty when I say that, but because we're leaving the younger generation this, you know? Um, and to those in the younger generation, uh, 20, 30, 40, this is your world. So if you're awake and uh, not doing anything, that means you're consenting to this world coming about for you. Um, it's, it's going to be a real, I don't know, I, I, I'd like to say that it's going to be a wake-up call, but they're bringing it about, you know, the boiling frog scenario. Uh, they won't even know uh, because they're bringing it about so incrementally that people will just slip into those mega regions and their slave status and uh, so you know a lot of people talk about how well when shit hits the fan people will wake up I disagree I absolutely disagree there's not going to be you know any great uh, wake up moment most people will follow their authority figures. Whatever happens, whatever scenario that decide to pull off with this shit hits the fan, they will march in lockstep with whatever their mommy and daddy authority figure tells them to do. Um, so, Umberto expected to wallop Bermuda 
Wednesday afternoon with heavy winds, preparations to protect life and property should be rushed to completion. Storm surge and heavy waves could bring coastal flooding on Wednesday night to Bermuda's southern coast. Tropical Depression 10 is strengthening and expected to become a hurricane when it approaches the Leeward Islands on Thursday night and Friday. So, National Hurricane Center. Well, tropical storm, here we go. By Thursday, 1 p.m., it should be in Dallas area, or just south of Dallas, and it's on its way to Fort Worth, Dallas. Uh, so they have it in, well, the Houston area. If the National Hurricane Center is forecasting it to move beyond Houston by tomorrow at 1 p.m., why are we reading that it's going to be in Houston for three days? If the storm is forecast to dissipate within three days, the full forecast and three-day graphic will be identical. Okay, well, then I guess you're not going to get any new information. They're just going to saturate these areas. All right, let me bring you to our fabulous, let me go through uh, the day. So this was at 516 this morning. And yeah, we were really hit hard in a lot of areas with extremely low frequencies. You gotta wonder what they're doing to us all. So, you got Illinois, uh, and Wisconsin hit hard. I'm, you know, <laughs> I do have to wonder how it is that people are actually still walking and breathing, um, but I don't have to wonder that those who are walking and breathing have turned into zombified, just robots, N not real. People, I find, are just not real anymore. But look at how this extremely low frequency seems to dissolve this storm right here in Idaho. All right, but let me take you down to Houston. Um, Oklahoma spitting out her extremely low frequency. Um, Got Nebraska. Come on, Carol. Here we go. Now, in the vid uh, in the article that I read um, last night, the Forbes article, they were talking about how this storm was going to organize, and it would. Um, It would come together, I can't remember the word that was used, but, you know, I read it as, well, that's the plan, right? They're going to bring all of these little, you know, precipitation dots um, together to create a whole lot of flooding that you so don't need in Texas. Well, they got it together. And it still doesn't look like, you know, what, <laughs> well, it, it doesn't even look like a tropical storm to me, but look at this nice, uh, 
very powerful, extremely low frequency coming out of the Panhandle in Florida, right on through uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama. Um, Twelve. Twelve. 54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, very, um, well, it's becoming more frequent, I'll say that. It's becoming far more frequent that we are seeing uh, our Doppler radar and these extremely low frequencies just blasting away. We usually see that, you know, after midnight, early morning. Well, it's one in the afternoon, one in the afternoon, so... Uh, our tropical storm Imelda was was she defined as a tropical storm Imelda then at one I don't think so but this is it uh, nice extremely low frequency right here down at the base but yeah it just came together all those pieces breaking apart a little, but yeah, well, this was at about 6, just shy of 7 p.m. tonight, all right, well, it does seem to be breaking apart a lot, and oh, wow, look, woof, We've got some uh, training storms, nanotechnology storms coming out of Louisiana. Look, they're being created right here. Looks like blowing bubbles. And they're whipping it around. Um, they're really wreaking havoc on our atmosphere. They are really wreaking havoc. Now, I showed you last night these extremely low frequencies coming out of this area of uh, right on the border, I guess, of Georgia and, and Florida. Um, they are quite powerful, but they're still, they're still moving them along. Look at this. Man, oh man, oh man. I really suck doing this. <sighs> now, look, I believe that this is plasma. And um, what chaos, atmospheric instability they are creating right here. And these extremely low frequencies, man, they are shooting them off. Now, all right, here is Imelda. She's being juiced up. She's, they're injecting cloud substance into Imelda. The whole thing is manipulated by man. And, you know, uh, when it becomes so obvious, that's what makes it maddening. And then you hear, oh, all these people going to their support groups, their depression, their despair, their frustration. You have no idea the frustration, despair, and mm, frustration, depression. The angst, the anger, the... Um, meh, woo, that you are creating in all of us. Look at this. I mean, really? Is this Mother Nature? Um, now I have people angry at me for saying Mother Nature because Mother Nature is satanic and God is in control of everything. Okay, well, oh, if this is God in control, that's not, that's not any, uh, idea that I have of a god. Alright, do you see 
we've got two air masses here this going counterclockwise and underneath it it's going well it's going in a north westerly do you see the difference here do you see the square that develops right here in the rectangle uh, I don't know guys I mean I don't have any doubt that there is going to be at least, you know, a few people, I, I, I don't know. I have subscribers in this area. Um, how many are going to be flooded out with this? How many? You know, when you really... And it's only because I've had the time, because I can't work, so this has been my work. And I, well, I'm less capable of doing it now, but I've been going through an awful lot every single day just to see what's happening all over. Uh, well, it was the world and the country, but yeah, um, we go down, right? Yeah, we do. All right, so just even, you know, what's happening in our every day every day we have more and more people going down every day um, this is Melda do you see that little shot right through the center of it uh, and if you just check this out you know you will see man's hand in it right down here you'll see all of the perfect holes which is being shot up with, you know, lasers. And you can see the geoengineering taking place, all of the lines. Um, another man-made storm. Our weather has been taken over. Don't you like this? This is right at the um, Texas border, Mexico. Oh, well, that's interesting. But this whole thing juiced up with frequencies. Sawtooth frequency, once again, the harp next red rings intersecting throughout it. You can see the extremely low frequencies being shot right here um, through, you see the very sawtoothed frequencies. I mean, now, precipitation on radar, it looks fried. It looks fried. And this is fried. I hope, I hope that all of you in Texas that you do not have to suffer the consequences of this weaponized weather. I hope to God that none of you are flooded out. I will be posting and thinking an awful lot about you guys in the Houston area uh, and further east and west and just on up to Dallas. Stay safe, everyone. All oh, right, the precipitable waters. As you can see, the pink, and the pink is, uh, well, it's got the most water in it, and it's ready to dump on Texas. You see it? You see the pink? They're bringing it into you guys. They're bringing it into you. So I really do hope that all of you stay safe and nothing happens. This is hard to watch. This is hard. This is hard, you know. All links are below.